Well, greetings, everyone, and welcome back to our Standing Watch program. While the United States of America is preparing mentally for the anniversary of September 11, 2001, a much greater development of potentially catastrophic proportions is already happening in Europe. And most Americans are totally oblivious to what is happening there. While San Diego County and other places in the United States of America were in the dark quite literally yesterday because of a power failure, I dare to say that most Americans are totally in the dark when it comes to what is prophesied to happen insofar as Europe is concerned and the relationship between Europe and the United States of America, Great Britain and other English-speaking nations, and also what is already happening in Europe right now. I'd like you to pay close attention to the news articles which I'm going to read to you now, which were published in Europe mainly this last week. And I also want you to understand how this is going to affect the United States of America in a way which makes the attack on September 11th, how devastating it was, minor, absolutely minor by comparison. Here is an article by Deutsche Welle, which said the following on September 4. Former German Chancellor Gerhard Schröder, and you may recall Gerhard Schröder, he was the one who opposed the Iraq war very vividly. He has appealed for the pace to be stepped up in the building of a more federal Europe. Schröder said Brussels needed to quicken the pace on establishing a federal style of European government at least as far as the economy is concerned. We are going to have to relinquish national sovereignty, he said. The European Parliament should become the highest authority for whatever power is given up by national parliaments. Schröder welcomed efforts by Angela Merkel and French President Nicolas Sarkozy in the direction of a common economic government. I will explain in a moment what this means. This article goes on to say he also attacked the position of Britain within the European Union. Great Britain causes the biggest problems, he said. And we have told you for years that ultimately a United States of Europe will come into existence, but it will not include Great Britain. In fact, it will be antagonistic towards Great Britain. Schroeder, according to this article, went on to say that we have to clearly recognize that Europe had an inner core of countries. Concrete decisions about the organization of any economic governance can only be made by Eurozone members and not by the whole of EU countries. In other words, England shouldn't have anything to do with it because they are not part of the Euro. Reuters added the following comment on September 5. Former German Chancellor Gerhard Schröder on Sunday called for the creation of a, quote, United States of Europe, something which England has warned against, and Europe so far has denied that that's what they want to do. Schröder called for it, calling it by name. Going on to say, we will have to give up national sovereignty. We should make a government which would be supervised by the European Parliament, and that means the United States of Europe. The Associated Press also reported on September 3 that Schröder is by far not the only one advocating the creation of the United States of Europe. It says financial officials and experts gathered in Italy mostly agreed Saturday that Europe needs deeper political union to preserve the troubled euro. At the heart of the matter is the fact that the European Union is operating, notice closely, at two speeds. So we have the core Europe concept, we have the Europe with two speeds concept. The Daily Mail on September 7 said this, Prime Minister, British Prime Minister David Cameron was branded by or was branded an EU enthusiast last night as he said Britain must let Eurozone countries move towards a 
United States of Europe. Of all people, Cameron used that coin and coined that phrase. He goes on to say, Mr. Cameron repeated his pledge that Britain would never join the Euro while he is in charge. According to the Bible, that's exactly what's going to happen. Britain will not join the Euro, especially when we are talking about the Eurozone members, not necessarily in the present constellation, becoming the leading nations in Europe, those core European nations. Here's an article by Der Spiegel, dated September 7. In a speech before German Parliament, part of a general debate on the budget, Angela Merkel made a plea for more Europe and said that to make Europe strong and lasting, treaty amendments can no longer be taboo in order to bind the EU closer together. She also reminded her country that a strong Europe was in Germany's interest. And then she is quoted as saying, listen carefully, the Euro is much, much more than a currency. The Euro is the guarantee of a united Europe. If the Euro fails, then Europe fails. And that is why I have been telling you from the outset, the Euro is going to stay. Because Europe is not going to fail. And the Euro is in fact the political glue. The Euro, that currency, that current, that current currency is the political glue which holds Europe together. So all those who are telling you that, well, Europe is going to dismantle the Euro and the European countries, they will go back to the national currencies, don't believe it. Those people who tell you that don't know what they're talking about. They don't understand biblical prophecy and they don't understand the European economy. Let me also quote to you from the local, dated September 7. Germany's top court ruled on Wednesday that aid for Greece and rescue packages for other Eurozone countries was legal. But they said Parliament must have greater say in any future bailout. Now, before this court decision was rendered, people wrote me and said, oh, you know, the court may say all of what Europe is doing right now, what Germany is doing right now is unconstitutional and that will bring great problems for Europe. And I said, there's no way in the world that the court will make that, it is that kind of a decision. Well, I was right again, not because I'm so smart, but because I understand biblical prophecy, my friends, and you can too. And I will show you a way later on how you can. What does this mean? Deutsche Welle said on September 7 that this court's decision is a victory for Euro backers. It supports, again, the Euro. But it goes further than that. This article by the New York Times, dated September 7, also said that Hannes Hesse, president of the German Engineering Federation, which represents manufacturers, said, in the long term it will only be possible to stabilize European Currency Union when the national parliaments of all the Euro countries accept limits on their fiscal sovereignty. The Euro project will have to make a unified economic policy in the Eurozone, which is unavoidable. Notice what this said. Not only are we talking now about a United States of Europe, but we are also talking about the Eurozone countries having to give up economic sovereignty, and not just economic sovereignty, but also political sovereignty, to give it to one higher authority. Supporters of greater integration content, according to this article, that a common economic government is a missing element for a stable future of the currency bloc. Now, in light of this, I'd like to read to you a very important article which was published by the Spiegel Online, dated September 5. It says, Hermann von Rompuy tends to be overlooked whenever European heads of state and government meet for their summits. He is one of the most powerful politicians in Europe, but he is almost unknown in most EU countries and in Germany. Merkel, Angela Merkel, wants to propose giving the European Council president even more power. He goes on to say, today it is primarily Great Britain again that is preventing 
the EU from growing closer together. Merkel, though, has had enough and is now planning a two-speed Europe. It would mean tightly interlocking the countries of the Eurozone, possibly by means of a separate treaty that would apply in parallel to the EU Treaty of Lisbon. And she can draw on a concept known as core Europe. The article concludes, the monetary union already has its own bodies that make decisions more or less independently of the European Commission. The important decisions have already been made for some time within the Euro Group, the group of finance ministers from the member states of the monetary union. They meet once a month or more often if necessary. But that is not enough for Merkel and Sarkozy. They want the 17 leaders, not just the finance ministers, leaders of the Eurozone countries to convene for a summit twice a year with Van Rompuy serving as its permanent chairman. Now, the Bible makes very clear, my friends, what is going to happen in the future. We are reading about Babylon, a vastly important and all-encompassing European economic power. You read about that in Revelation 17, Revelation 18, in the book of Ezekiel, in other places. We also read, however, that out of this, not apart and separate from it, out of this will come a group of nations, ten nations or groups of nations, they will rule to an extent this European economic block, but then they in turn will give their power and their authority to a charismatic leader called the Beast in the book of Revelation. Now I'm not saying that von Rompuy is that person, he is not, because the Bible also tells you that the person will have to be of German descent. But can you see, my friends, what is being discussed over there in Europe? And I dare to say they have no clue as what the Bible says. It's totally in harmony with what the Bible says. And not only that, the Bible tells you when that is happening, that it's going to be an antagonistic relationship between this core Europe, these ten nations or groups of nations led by the beast, towards Great Britain and towards the United States of America, ending up in an all-encompassing worldwide war. And I'm not just talking about a very limited war. I'm talking about a war fought with chemical, biological, and nuclear weapons. The Bible tells us, and these are the words of Jesus Christ, it will lead to a tribulation, such a great tribulation, which has never occurred before, which will never occur again. And unless God would intervene, no human being would survive. That is how dangerous it's going to become. That's why I said what happened on September 11 is, relatively speaking, unimportant to what is happening in Europe right now, leading to these cataclysmic events, and America is in the dark, totally oblivious towards what's happening over there. You, my friends, can know more about what is prophesied. You don't have to believe me, but you believe the Bible, and then you will know. We have prepared several booklets quoting scripture after scripture after scripture showing you what is going to happen. For instance, the booklet, The Great Tribulation and the Day of the Lord. The booklet, The Fall and Rise of Britain and America. The booklet, Europe in Prophecy. And our most recent booklet, Germany in Prophecy. You study those booklets and you will know. And I pray that you will make the right decisions once you do know. Thanks very much for watching. This is Norbert Link for the Standing Watch program.